Spain, Europe's fourth largest country and a place of culture that attracts the second highest number of tourists in the world. It's home to some of the most renowned sites and festivals, but I won't focus on that. Welcome to the Spanish Era 404, a series that's aimed at showing you the very true Spain that was ravaged by an enormous economic crisis. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Maciej and I'm a 23-year-old student from Poland and I have come here to Spain to study in Valencia for half a year. During my studies I have said to myself that I will travel to the whole of Spain and I will see all the best sites like the Alhambra and all the beautiful cities like Madrid, like Barcelona or like Valencia which is an amazingly beautiful city. Nonetheless, I have decided to see something else. Some places that, as you see right now, or ugly as hell, because they're, they're the prime examples of the crisis, of the crisis that happened towards the end of the 2000s that led to the collapse of the economy of Spain and many other countries in Europe, including Portugal and Greece especially. So I am in Ciudad Valdeluz, a city that was left half unfinished with currently only 4,000 inhabitants of the 30,000 planned. So that's a big overshot. And the overshot is so big that everywhere around this area you get street and you have these huge alleyways that lead to pretty much nothing because there are no houses to supplement those streets. Although the city center is pretty beautiful and there is a good connection with the AVE train, the Alta Velocidad Española, tickets are expensive and people just don't want to come here because why would you? This place is empty so that's why I'm here. I'm here to show you this place and I'm here to explain to you exactly why all of this failed in my humble opinion of a non-economist who does not understand economy. What could go wrong? In the case of Ciudad Valdeluz, a lot. Towards the end of the 1990s, the final project of the Alta Velocidad Española line from Madrid to Zaragoza was approved with a station to be built some 8 kilometers away from Guadalajara, a city close to the capital. This sparked typical urban speculation that was aimed at the redevelopment of areas adjacent to the new railway line as presented by this promotional video that was created by the original development enterprise leading the construction of Ciudad Valdeluz. This, quite literally, led to the situation where the Ava line gave birth to Valdeluz. But it has to be said that rather than birth this was a miscarriage. The inspirational music and sound filled shots of the city can deceive a viewer easily but be not fooled. This was an idiotic, uncontrolled vision of a city in the middle of nowhere, too far from Guadalajara, way too far from Madrid, and with an expensive train connection that is now only served by four trains a day, Valdeluz was destined to fail. All of this despite it aiming to be your new dream home, provided that you wanted to live sort of in Madrid but did not have the sort of money required for that, and to compensate for the location you were to get a country golf club, a school, a supermarket, a church, everything that a modern city needs and almost all of what was never completed in Valdeluz. With construction work beginning in 2003, Ciudad Valdeluz was only partially completed, with a few housing blocks being built in the first phase. As soon as the crisis hit in 2008, the city streets that were meant to be lined with beautiful houses were simply left abandoned. And today there are miles of them, lined with weeds and gutted lamps and overgrown sidewalks. A site that remains as a testament to the sheer idiocy of the idea of building a city in this very remote location. If you were to ask the question, what is Ciudad Valdeluz known for? The best answer would be for Top Gear. This was the site of the famous race in one of the episodes where the three British presenters went through the city and made it into a racetrack, hence the abandoned streets allowed for that. If your city is famous because a bunch of British comedians slash presenters came to laugh about it and tell you how desolate and empty it is, then you've got a problem. And the problem here is huge. Yeah, and here I am. Besides me, only one person exited the train at this station. And like different sources say different things, but usually it's around 200 people a week entering trains here, I'm boarding trains here and uh, leaving them. So not a very popular station as you can see. And it's a station of the AVE of the Alta Velocidad Española, which is the quickest way to get here, but it's also quite expensive. So that's why probably why the people who live here don't use it. The basic thing here is that Ciudad Valdeluz was supposed to be nine and a half thousand apartments, houses, built for around 30,000 people in different phases. And the reason why currently I am in the middle of nowhere 
in the middle of a field with some train tracks next to me is very obvious. This place was constructed after the approval of the line of the Alta Velocidad Española towards Zaragoza and towards Barcelona. So when this line was being supposed to be constructed, this land didn't have any value at the time. So when they built this line, this was the destined location for the station for the city of Guadalajara for the Alta Velocidad. Which is quite funny because pretty much all of the stations, when it comes to smaller cities in Spain, for the Alta Velocidad lines are always located outside of the cities, like in Cuenca or in Requena. They're not in the city center, they're far away, just like this one, because this one is some eight kilometers from Guadalajara, which is supposed to be the city that this station serves. So this development was built here, and the first construction started around 2003 and 2004. So those are the first, first buildings being constructed, and this land previously, well, previously, way back in time, belonged to a company that was supposedly related with uh, family bonds to one of the ministers of the Spanish government and minister of education from what I remember. So there were some signs that possibly there was some corruption about this area here. So when this area was being sold for development purposes or was repurposed for development purposes by the government, it suddenly jumped in value because it was now very, very valuable land. You have a station of the Alta Velocidad that's going to serve the city in the future. So, you know, perfect place to build, except it's in the middle of the field. And at the time when this was finished, around 2006, 2007, the first people started moving in. Well, not much was done. So about 37 people moved in here into the first year. And right now, currently, I mean, these are the statistics for 2019, around 3,000 people are living here. Remember what I said? It was supposed to be 30,000, 10 times less. This city is the perfect example of how the property bubble worked. Cheap credit led to rapid construction that was facilitated by loosened government control over banks and their overly optimistic reports, since the budgets of local authorities were being filled with millions of euros from the property tax anyways. This recipe for disaster is exactly how things were in Spain for years, a period that abruptly ended in 2008 with the worst crisis that this country has ever suffered. A crisis that is still omnipresent on the peninsula and that I will explore with you throughout this series. Tune in on to Spanish Air 4 for soon to learn more. Okay, where I'm walking now, there's a guy that patrols these streets for some reason. Seems to be some sort of a vigilante. Not a cop or anyone. I'll try to get into one of these buildings and show you from up top from the drone. Because I was not a fool and I didn't forget it this time, so I don't have to go back here again in the future. 